Hi, I'm Trina Campbell. We're here at the beautiful Lavelle Farms. The following is the latest in a series by internationally acclaimed horseman Peter Campbell. Watch Peter as he reveals to you the time-honored philosophy where the horse's mind and the human's mind join together as one. Thank you for watching. come to these clinics, I'm learning that there's easier methods and it's working. It's a philosophy, it's, it becomes part of your life, you use it in all your life and it's, you start thinking like that. There were a couple of horses, and then some horses didn't work out. And i um, disappointed about that now because if I had known what I know now from studying with Peter, I would have still had those horses probably. You know, I wouldn't have given up on them. He had her doing less, and ultimately she got more. And that's a tough concept for people to understand. See, as Debbie, as long as the yellow horse keeps pushing forward when you want it to shift back, that spot where he gets hoppy is always going to be there. But that's because he won't shift his weight back. That's because when you ride him, you, you ride him with collection all the time, and it has no meaning to him. Okay. You see? So the more I do the slightness, he's just going to get. No, you got to get to his feet. That soft feel is no good unless it's hooked to his feet. So shift his weight back, back, see, back, there, now release it. So you're trying to get that nose and chin down and in, soft feel, but don't let him push on your hands, do not let him push on your hand, you can't have it, it won't work. There, see cat, when you go slower. See, it works out better. And then his nose isn't tipped the wrong way, right? So that's better. But you gotta shift that weight back. You've got to. And you try to get that so he's soft. He doesn't need to put his head to his chest, but he needs to get so that he turns loose in there. But you need to keep working at it. And see if you can feel him get ready to move his foot. You might not even know when he's going to move that foot. So don't irritate him. But he might get irritated. But don't irritate him. There's a difference there. It's like you're not trying to scare him, but he might get scared. You're not trying to bother him, but he might get bothered. You see, there's a difference there. And you need to think in that area to, to get it to, to trying to understand what to do. You need to get your reins hooked to his feet. And take him for a little trot. Take him for a little trot. Trot him around a little bit. Get him to drop his nose and chin down and in. Encourage it when he reaches with that front foot. Now trot him right out. Go. Get life in your body. Go. Now walk him. 
Slow that life down in your body. Make it difficult to trot and easy to walk. Come on. The more you drag on the reins and it doesn't get to his feet, the harder and the more bracier your horse will get. Trot him. Get life in your body. Your legs, everything. Walk him. Walk. Make it difficult to trot and easy to walk. Now stop. Make it difficult to walk and easy to stop. Now make it difficult to stand still and easy to back up. He moves away from his own pressure. Now stop him. Now walk him. Now stop him. Back him up 10 steps. Back him up 10 steps. Sit still. Back him up another 10. Walk him ahead five. Stop him. Get down to his feet. You get your hands ready and your arms and everything. If you find yourself walking, I say walk five steps and you find yourselves on the fifth step going, my hands are too long. Don't expect him to be right on. Don't expect him to wait around when you want him to wait. Don't expect him to be in a learning frame of mind because you need to get ready first, your body. You get ready on the third step, slow the fourth one down, stop the fifth one. Does that make sense about getting ready? You get ready on the third one, slow the fourth one down, and stop the fifth one. Back him up 10 steps. 10. I'm not backing up 10, I'm just back up a few so you can see. Count them with the front feet. Now ride him ahead 10. Get ready on the eighth one, slow the ninth one down and stop the tenth step. Be ready for it. See, feel. Feel of him, feel for him. You both feel together. So when you feel of him, that'll be, maybe you might have to start on the fourth step. First you've got to get him so he's not pushy and that'll change him from being bothered but then that will change. So you got to be careful there. So once you get him, now remember the number. Let's say you picked five. You take his nose, you tip it, then your elbow straightens out and you bump him with your outside leg. Your elbow straightens out like this. Okay, when you do it, you bend, your elbow bends, his hind quarter step over right there, then you straighten your elbow out. At hind quarters, now your elbow straightens out and his front end comes through. All right? Trot on. You got to open that gate so he can move his front end away from your outside leg. Trot right on. Left, left rein, left leg. Bend your elbow. Touch him by the back sin. As soon as he steps over, straighten your elbow out a wide away from his neck. Trot on. Don't hold anybody up. Get your horse to move. Right rein, right leg by the back cinch, hind quarters, and we'll elbow your arm straightens out, out wide. Go. Trot on. And I'm safer. I had a bad experience with a horse and was thrown and broke my collarbone. So there was a year of recuperating, and that year was real important because then I really decided, you know, you have to make a commitment about how you're going to do things here. <laughs> and I think everybody does that in their life. I mean, you have to do that with things in your life, whether it's with people or your job or your friends, and you have to sort that out. See, all these things get in his way from being right. It's the basics. The basics of horsemanship that he needs to get caught up on. And the reason they get like this is because you try to do things, you try to do things that instead of the horse getting prepared, 
it's just uh, trying to do an action, trying to do um, a maneuver, but not thinking of where the horse is at. You see? Not working from where he's at. No, no. He'll get to thinking there pretty quick. See, and then he doesn't want to drive off, he wants to wad up. He won't wait, he just does it. He doesn't wait for permission. So he is anticipating, and I don't want my horses to anticipate. I'll just ride him around here a little bit. I'm just wanting to trot out, not to turn. See, now he's lengthening his stride. There. See? Now, that's the way he should do it. But any other time, it was a waste of time. If, if what you were trying to do is get him to do it, and he done it, then it's, it's building tightness into the horse, not taking it out. Does that make sense? But it took a while, but it wasn't the turn that was a problem. It was him, no, no. See, he wants to fling his head like that. I want him just to trot out and lengthen his stride like that. Oh. See, it's, to me, it's all over the place. It's here, it's there, it's here, it's there. It, it won't stay between my hands and my legs. But I'll get him to stay between my hands and my legs. There, see, the horse looks different to me. There. But it wasn't him coming through there, it was his hind quarters. Does that make sense? There's a depth of quality inside Peter that um, you won't get out of four or five clinics. There's, there's so much knowledge inside that man that uh, with the horse, with animals, whether it's cattle, horses, dogs, um, there's such a depth of quality and a I keep saying it, but an integrity that goes along with that, that every time you watch him, it doesn't matter whether it's the same horse. I mean, when he's um, doing the clinic, sometimes he rides the same horse for, you know, a few times, or we've had some horses we've had for a while. And I'll be watching him, and I'll see that horse, and I'll be like, gosh, it's even better than it was before, and I, I couldn't think of it being any better. Or I'll see him step on someone's horse that you think is looking all right, and then he works it for just five or six minutes and it's so much better it's like night and day to me it's like it escapes you it's escaping it's it's getting out of the way it, it's uh, uh, as soon as you ask it it just it gets out of the way to to keep from any kind of well there's no other word to use it is like it's escaping And the, the reason those things happen is because the horse starts to there um, anticipate things, you know, and that's why it was so hard to get him to go out, to trot out. Remember you said it was hard to get him to trot, right? And that's because the reason he wouldn't trot is because he was always anticipating something going on. He'd anticipate turning. He'd anticipate, no. And so I just get him so he doesn't anticipate. I want him to anticipate 10,000 things, not one thing. Does that make sense? And so when I'd ride him, it, see, it took a little while for him to figure it out. But I'd ask him to trot and he'd try to go. And I'd say, hey, stay with me, just trot. He said, well, I'm not sure. And then when I'd turn him, he, instead of him getting soft, and getting his feet in place, he'd just get tight and just bang. 
And it wasn't his front end, it was his hindquarters. Because he was always anticipating doing something instead of just lining out and going. He says, I don't know about that. But does that make sense to you? So I'll give you a little bit of time. You can ride around here. You need to practice moving his front end, leg yielding him. Kind of practice some of those things. Maybe ride him along and leg yield him off the fence. All right? And practice getting him to reach and to, to, to put effort into moving, to trotting, to, to going. I'll turn the music on and give you a little bit of incentive. But all these things, you've got the round corral if you need to. Somebody wants to go inside, they can. Somebody wants to be on the outside, you can too. It won't matter where, what people are doing. That's just an opportunity to get your horses to respond. Um, one of the things we're going to work on is we're going to work on a little, I hope it's not too early uh, in your development, I guess is uh, we're going to work on walking your horse like this, your know, haunch is in, and you're going to ask for a soft feel, you're going to hold him with your left leg up by the front cinch, and you're going to bring your right leg back, and his hindquarters is going to step in, and you're going to release him. You might have to do quite a little to get him to try, but you need to get him to that place where your horse will try, he needs to do something. Now, soft feel, tip his nose right, block him with your right leg by the front cinch. Use your left leg by the back cinch. One step, all you, you, all you might feel is him shift his weight toward the center. That's all you might feel, is him shift his weight toward the center. So when you're going along here, you just take a hold of it right and bring them haunches in, then release it. Let the horse straighten out. Then again, it's like his front end stays on that line. You tip his nose, Haunches in. And then at that time, see, he would pick up the lope. So you'd tip his nose here, haunches in, and then release it. You tip his nose, haunches in, release it. So if you wanted him to pick up that lope on that right lead, that's what would happen. That's what it would feel like. All you might feel is him just trying to come in. Now you'll tip his nose left, hold him with your left leg by the front cinch, bring your right leg back, get him to come with his hindquarters toward the center. I'm doing it, I'm kind of going along with you, so if you need to see what it looks like, let's see, you tip his nose left, hold him, hindquarters in. Then I release him, let him go on. Then I ask him here, and he should just round out, come in with one step. It's important to get him so that your hands, he stays between your hands and your legs. He just needs to kind of round around your leg, that's all. It's like your front, your left leg is holding the front and the right leg is bringing him hind quarters in toward the center. So you try to keep him front feet on that line and hind quarters would just give, just step. But if there's any resistance in there, he won't step in. Well, both legs are on him at the same time. See, both legs are on your horse at the same time. Left leg up by the front cinch, right leg back. You just want it to step in just like that, one step. You can kind of feel it. It's kind of like you do this with your body. If you just kind of arch, try to shove, bend your rib cage and shove your hind quarters toward the center. Do this, sit up and go like this. It's like you're kind of bending your rib cage and your, your hindquarters that you're sitting on come to the center. That's what it kind of feels like. So you kind of get him soft and then you ask him. It's kind of like he rounds out like that. Feels like it, maybe, maybe, if you can help it. But you try to get it so it gives soft there. And it's kind of like your body's got to do that anyways because that's what his body is doing. So and really what happens is you'll put more, my right cheek kind of comes down here 
on the right because you're opening up that left side of your body so that he can do that, you see? So he can do it. I was in 4-H, I mean, I was a leader and I went to many clinics, but there was always something missing. And until I met Peter and went to some of his clinics, I realized, boy, there's better ways to do this, safer ways and easier ways. And, and I'm getting the, the response from the little bit of communication that we're having. Before there was no communication, it was a matter of, I'm telling you to do this, and now I'm asking my horse to do it, and he's happy to do it. He gets zero pressure. There's zero pressure when he responds. Yesterday's change, you see today. Today's change, you'll see tomorrow. You're trying to do as little as it takes, but you do what it takes. No more, no less. Pretty soon it builds on those things. The horse is very smart. He can build on the littlest thing. You need to keep your horse centered. For more information on clinics or videos, contact our office at 1-800-349-7078 or find us on the internet at willingpartners.com.